Last year, right before the holidays, something strange landed in our podcast inbox. It was an email from a listener and self-described humbled bro named Pete. And Pete wasn't being a sarcastic bro either. The first line of his email read, I'm writing to thank you, but also to apologize. Now, over the years, we've received our fair share of thank yous and screw yous, but um, unsolicited apologies, those are pretty rare. <laughs> Pete told us that he'd sent us some sexist messages in the past that he now regrets. He wrote, I can only imagine the toll people like me took on you having to respond to ragey emails with, yes, we know, hashtag not all men. Thank you for helping a 30-something-year-old man become less of a jerk. Pete's unprompted thank you underscores one of the biggest things podcasting has taught us, the power of listening. It can change who we see in the world and how we respond to them. But in order to harness that power for good, we have to learn to discern the difference between hearing what we want to hear versus hearing what's actually being communicated and where it's coming from. Exactly, because here's an uncomfortable truth. Merely becoming aware of bias, prejudice, and or bigotry won't necessarily change behaviors and beliefs. Or to put it another way, simply being told we are racist, sexist, homophobes won't necessarily make us any less racist, sexist, or homophobic. In fact, it'll more likely have the opposite effect, and that opposite effect is called confirmation bias. That's academic speak for our tendency to think we know more than we actually do. And thinking we're right roadblocks curiosity and listening. So the problem isn't so much that we're, we don't all hold the right perspectives and values. The problem is that we're not making space for the messy realities of reconciling our differences for the greater good. And that's what we want to talk with y'all about today. In a time when it is arguably harder than ever to really listen to one another, how can we take off our figurative earmuffs, take personal responsibility for our own filters, and tune into the truths that can help all of us become humbled bros, too. <laughs> I'm Caroline Irvin. I'm Kristen Conger, and we are longtime podcasters, professional woman splainers, and hosts of the podcast Unladylike. Through storytelling, research, and interviews, we specialize in excavating gender constructs, challenging whitewashed feminism, and not taking norms for granted. And that applies to everything from how we make our body hair choices to why we haven't ratified an equal rights amendment. <laughs> if a decade of research on women and gender has taught us anything, it's that we still have a whole lot more to learn. That knowledge keeps pushing us to do better. And so does our audience. Listening to our listeners and letting them know they're heard is what cultivates an audience into a community. And sometimes that's easier said than done because it can come with hearing some uncomfortable truths and criticisms. Pete was right that being feminist podcasters can mean regularly reckoning with what a polarized, hot mess of a time we are all living through. Cable news pundits give us politics without context. Social platforms give us hot takes without compassion. And media silos give us communication without connection. In fact, less than half of Americans trust traditional media sources, including journalists, reporters, and news organizations. So what can we, as individuals, change? We can change ourselves. What we listen to, how we hear it, how we respond. Take us, for instance, as y'all might have noticed, we're white. We're also cisgender, able-bodied, UGA-educated, and we benefit from all of the unearned privileges that those identities endow. And if y'all just rolled your eyes at the term privilege, you probably benefit from some, too. 
Privilege can cloud our credibility as hosts. For instance, in the early 2010s, when we first started covering trans identity, a trans listener kindly wrote in to correct us for using the term transgendered as if it's a medical condition. Or more recently, we heard from a listener about an offhand STD joke that I made in an episode. She shared that she has herpes and often the stigma associated with it is far more painful than the physical symptoms. So hearing me make that thoughtless remark really stung. Our audience continually pushes us to work harder, to do better. They've actually inspired our unladylike motto, which guides pretty much everything we make. And we think that it can help all of us hear each other more clearly day to day. It goes, stay curious, build empathy, raise hell. So let's start at the very beginning. Step one, stay curious. All of the research on unlearning stereotypes and biases underscores that you've got to be truly open to it. It requires an attention span for awkward silences and unsettling reality checks rather than talking over and tuning out. And we are tuning out. According to the Pew Research Center, as of late 2019, 45% of American adults say they'd stopped talking political or election news with someone because of something they said or posted online. And that is true across party <laughs> lines. Curiosity, on the other hand, is the engine of creativity, compassion, and connection. It's the fly in the ointment of the status quo and the itch to keep challenging ourselves to do better. It's also our go-to answer for unladylike listeners like Sophia. Sophia DM'd us on Instagram and said, I am a proud 12-year-old bisexual and genderqueer feminist living in Sonoma County, California. I have always shut down any bullying against any minority as soon as I see it. I know I'm only 12, but how can I do more? Y'all, <laughs> Sophia also told us she'd started an LGBTQ plus alliance at her school and plans to become a civil rights attorney when she grows up. So we should probably be going to her for life advice, but we really encourage Sophia to stay curious because it's important to figure out not just what you stand for, but also why or why not. Clarifying the context is what helps make sense of what scares us. Maybe it's a fear of change, of being judged or misunderstood. By grounding ourselves in history, cultural influences, and a healthy dose of media literacy, we are better prepared for step two, building empathy. Empathy anticipates and accepts the nuances of life. It takes that curiosity we've been talking about and converts it into connection. And to get that whole process started, we've got to start listening. If face-to-face -face interaction can't happen, research also suggests indirect contact can help reduce biased behaviors and related anxieties. I mean, that's part of why podcasting is one of our favorite empathy exercises. For instance, our personal playlists intentionally contain shows that are not made and hosted by other white ladies. <laughs> our bread and butter, as unladylike, is finding out why things are the way they are for women and non-binary folks, not why things are the way they are just for similarly privileged white women. Yeah, one example that always comes to mind for me is a light bulb moment I had while listening to a podcast called Small Doses. The specific episode was titled Side Effects of White Women, and it really laid bare the stereotyping, undercutting, and yes, hair touching that black women deal with from white women, well-meaning ones included. Parts of it were tough to listen to because I have been that problematic white lady before. It also revealed a blind spot. Unladylike had just published an episode on workplace sexism, supposedly the primary occupational hazard for women, right? 
Yet on small doses, I was hearing not just about glass ceilings, but also constant tone policing and marginalization that black women were also dealing with in their nine to fives. On the path to dropping our defensiveness and staying curious, we have to practice being accountable for our slip ups. Sociologists call this self-confrontation, and it's basically like breaking a bad habit. Over time, if you continue to confront yourself, you can replace biased behavior with a more curious, empathetic outlook. And we're not just talking about your podcast intake either. Relearning to listen can start as simply asking yourself, in my day-to-day, who do I listen to? What do I hear? How do I respond? The answers can activate step three, raising hell. By raising hell, we mean getting comfortable with getting uncomfortable. And that's what happened for an unladylike listener named Joanna. She spent the past couple years waffling over whether to run for elected office, but figured she just couldn't pull it off. Then, after listening to an episode on how and why women tend to feel less ready to become political candidates than men, Joanna's waiting game was over. I've decided to run, she wrote us. I'm starting my bid for the county commissioner seat. Raising hell can look like pursuing public office, and it can also look like pursuing deeply personal revelations. And that brings us back to our humbled bro, Pete. In his email to us, he said that there had been times when what we'd said on the podcast, you know, he disagreed with. There were also times that things we said made him angry. Whatever changes happened in Pete, we don't take credit for it. That was all Pete. He stayed curious, built empathy, and raised hell when it came to his perspectives on women and sexism. Yes, the world is noisier than ever. But if what you hear makes you feel anxious, upset, or misrepresented, take it from Pete and us two humbled podcasters. Those are opportunities to learn, to take responsibility, and to become a better listener. Thank you. <laughs>